What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, guys, so it's time for us to basically jump back into our ultimate Marvel reading order. But today, guys, we are going to jump back into with Ultimate War. Now, guys, this is the first crossover in the Ultimate Universe between the X-Men and the Ultimates. Now, Real quick side note, the Ultimates are this universe version of the Avengers. The thing is though, they do not call themselves the Avengers, they call themselves the Ultimates. Kind of weird, but hey, whatever. But anyways, this is the first crossover of the Ultimate Universe, a storyline called Ultimate War. The X-Men versus the Ultimates. Now, Guys, our last video, Ultimate X-Men Volume 4, that was the prelude to this video right here. Now guys, Mark Miller, he has been working his way up to this crossover right here. Through Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, he has sat down and worked his way through all those books to get to this point right here. Now... The reason why I say that is because, guys, at the end of our last video, the prelude to this video right here, at the very end, Magneto, Magneto got his memory back. And guys, remember, back in the end of Ultimate X-Men Volume 1, it did seem like Charles Xavier did kill Magneto at the end of Ultimate X-Men Volume 1. And the thing is, the whole world believed that the X-Men really did kill Magneto. But, in the middle of Volume 3, we come to find out that Charles Xavier lied to the world. That he used his powers to make the world believe that he killed Magneto. But in reality, he just wiped Magneto's mind completely. Made him forget every single detail of his Magneto life even about his own powers. And so at the end of volume four, the Brotherhood of Mutants, they were able to find out that Magneto is still alive. Thanks to Blob basically talking to Beast by catfishing Beast, making Beast believe that he was some girl online and Beast told Blob that, hey, Magneto is still alive. Right now, we have him somewhere where the world does not know about at all. And so, the Brotherhood of Mutants went to Magneto and basically recovered all of his memories. And so, Magneto is back in the Ultimate Universe. And at the very end of Volume 4, Magneto wrote in the sky saying, Thank you, Charles. Meaning that Magneto is back. Now, that was a quick recap of almost everything you guys missed in the first four volumes of Ultimate Universe, Ultimate X-Men. Now, with Ultimate War Guys issue number one, we pick up with basically a bunch of people on a bridge, on the Brooklyn Bridge. And the thing is though, they are just trying to travel across the bridge. The problem is though, there is of course traffic on the bridge and so everybody is in standstill traffic, meaning that they can't go forward, they can't go back because some random 18-wheeler truck just has some kind of issues. Now, the thing is though, as you have about 800 people on this bridge, on Brooklyn Bridge, the next thing you know, the bridge just blows up. The bridge blows up and it kills 800 people just like that. Bam, gone. And it's kind of like, yo, what in the world is going on? But the thing is though, you have Magneto go on live television and tells the world, listen, that was just a warning. That was just a warning right there to show you that I am back, but also to say, hey, listen, the time has come for mutants to take over the earth, to get rid of the human race and for mutants to take over the earth. Now, with Magneto going on live television, you do have the president of America asking Nick Fury what in the world is going on. Because when they all last checked, they had him filed in their system as D for dead. He was dead in their system, but now he is A, alive. 
He should be filed under A alive right now. How in the world did this happen? How in the world did we let this slip through our hands? That Magneto never died. That he, he is actually alive. Now, the next few pages is basically Nick Fury telling the President of America, Listen, do not worry. We are going to figure everything out. We're going to figure everything out. Figure out why in the world did Charles Xavier lie to us, but also find out how in the world can we bring down Magneto. And the thing is, you have Nick Fury say, listen, you forgot. We have our own superhero team now. We have the Ultimates. The Ultimates can go out there and basically capture Magneto. Like we made a team, especially for this situation right here. We'll be okay. Do not worry. And the thing is, you have the president tell Nick Fury, you better be right. Because if you don't catch Magneto, you're fired. You're fired and we'll find someone else to take your spot. Now, guys, we do jump forward to the Ultimates being the Ultimates. And the thing is though, guys, you have Captain America and a few other characters like Hawkeye, Black Widow, and right now, they are going after some of the smaller members of the Brotherhood of Mutants, like Toad, Rogue, and the Vanisher. Random characters that most folks do not care for yet in the Ultimate Universe. And so, you have these lower level Brotherhood of Mutants right now watching the television. And they're kind of like, okay, so the Ultimates are telling news channels that they have some kind of source to find us. There's no way they can find us. We're good. We're hidden from the world. They can't find us. And the thing is though, guys, as Rogue and Toad are talking to one another, out of nowhere, Captain America and Hawkeye and Black Widow just walk right into the room and say, we are here to arrest y'all. We're here to get you guys and hopefully you guys can lead us to your big boss, Magneto. And so for the next few pages, it's just Captain America, Hawkeye, and Black Widow basically catching um, Rogue, Toad, Vanisher, and I want to say Mastermind also. But basically, these guys are the lower level of the Brotherhood of Mutants. Now, we do jump over to the Ultimate's base. Now, this is where I kind of want to sit down and have a brief discussion on how crazy the Ultimate Universe is. Oh, sorry, I can't talk. I want to sit down and basically talk about how crazy the Ultimate Universe is. And what I mean is that, so back in our last video, we covered Volume 4 of Ultimate X-Men, right? So the first two parts of that video right there, I want to say it was 21 and 22 of Ultimate X-Men, it takes place before the Ultimates event. But 23, 24, 25, the later half of our last Ultimate X-Men video takes place after our Ultimates video. Because thing is though, as we pick up with the Ultimates at their base, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, they are part of the Ultimates. And the thing is, you have Captain America bringing them in, hoping that they can help they can help him out to find a way to stop Magneto, to finally bring him in. Because, hey, their goal right now is to bring down the number one terrorist in the world, Magneto. Now, as they walk in, you do have Cap call up Iron Man and say, hey, man, have you found the X-Men? Because thing is, though, for the world, Charles Xavier was training the X-Men to be some superhero team to handle problems like this. Magneto just blew up a bridge. So where are the X-Men? And the thing is, to wrap up the first issue of Ultimate War, you have Iron Man walk into the X-Mansion and he says, they're not here. This mansion is vacant. Like they have been gone for a long period of time. And that's the only sign I have here. And that's a bad sign because that means or could possibly mean the X-Men have just teamed up with the Brotherhood of Mutants. 
Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate War number two, with this book right here guys, this book picks up right after the ending of Ultimate War number one. Now, thing is though guys, we pick up with Dr. Gray, the father of Jean Gray. And the reason why we pick up with Dr. Gray is because right now you have Wasp from the Ultimates right now interrogating Dr. Gray. The father of Jean Grey and the reason why she is interrogating Dr. Grey because guys in the ultimate universe Dr. Grey and Charles Xavier they are very close they are very close and because thing is right before Charles Xavier formed the X-Men Jean Grey who was his second student in this universe her power is going so crazy that her parents had no idea how to help their daughter out. And so Charles Xavier went over to the Gray's house, helped Jean Grey out. And ever since that day, Dr. Gray looks at Charles Xavier as a great honorable man. A great person to have in the world. And so you have Dr. Gray say, listen, I know why you're here. You think I'm going to tell you where the X-Men are, are at right now. Because right now you guys are looking for the X-Men. Well listen, I have no idea where in the world are the X-Men at right now. But let me say this right here. The reason why Charles Xavier did what he did. The reason why he faked Magneto's death. Is because he knew if you guys had captured Magneto. Well you guys would have killed him. Right off the bat. But for Charles Xavier, what he wanted to do instead was try to basically fix Magneto. Kind of like give him some kind of rehab to make him a better person. But the thing is, he knew he couldn't do that with you guys. He knew you guys would catch him and kill him. And that's why he faked Magneto's death. Now, you do have Dr. Gray say, listen, you can tell your psychics, your psychics, sorry, to stop trying to read my mind because you, you forgot one thing my daughter is also a psychic and so is her teacher and so I know when somebody is trying to probe my mind for information don't worry you're not gonna find anything in my head and so wasp just leaves dr. Gray's house now we do jump over to one of the safe houses of Charles Xavier and the thing is the X-Men are hiding in this safe house now guys this part right here is just to show us that the X-Men are on edge right now because right now to the world the X-Men well they're enemies also right now because they lied to the world they made the world believe that Magneto was dead but he's still alive and so to the public, to the Ultimates, it's kind of like we need to bring the X-Men in for answers right now. Because you guys told us, made us believe Magneto was dead, but he's alive. You also left your X-Mansion behind for like for a good couple weeks and everything ever since Magneto has returned. That also looks bad. It looks so bad on you guys right now. And so the X-Men on edge, they're on edge, you know, Storm hates Beast right now because Beast is the reason why they're in this situation because he told Blob, hey, by the way, Magneto is still alive. So Storm hates Beast right now. Now, to wrap up this section right here, you do have the X-Jet return back from the Savage Land. Now, guys, remember, back in my last video... Wolverine, Cyclops, and Kitty Pride, they went on a mission into the Savage Land. And they haven't they have not returned back yet until this book right here. And with them coming back home to New York, Jean Grey realized she only reads two minds on the X Jet. Wolverine and Kitty Pride. And you have Wolverine come out of the X Jet and say, I'm sorry, Jean Grey. But Cyclops is dead. He died. I'm sorry. Now, we don't know how he died. Because the last thing we saw 
Wolverine, Cyclops, and Kitty Pride, they were running away from Savage Land being blown up. But we don't know if it's really real that Cyclops did die or not. Now, we do jump over to the base of the Ultimates. And the thing is, you kind of have the Ultimates just go over a game plan to try to catch Magneto. That's their big game plan right now, to catch Magneto. They're going through game plans, trying to catch Magneto, and trying to figure out where in the world are the X-Men are at. Now, with the Ultimates going around the world and just basically capturing mutants who could have any kind of connection to the Ultimates, well, you have... Magneto attacked the base of the Ultimates. He attacks the base of the Ultimates. He said, I'm tired of this. I am trying to show you guys it's time for a change. It's time for mutants to take over the world. And I'm here to show y'all that you guys can't stop me. I am a very powerful super villain. And guys, he tells the truth right there. Because you have Thor, Captain America, all the Ultimates try to attack Magneto. And they fail. They fail one by one. Just like that. They could not stop Magneto at all. But, get this right here though guys. Because you do have Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch also part of the Ultimates. And so you have Magneto go up to his children and say, you two are a huge disappointment. A huge disappointment in my life. And you know what? You guys deserve punishment. Punishment for basically leaving my side and joining this other side, the human race side. And so what Magneto does, he gets guns and he basically shoots Quicksilver. And he makes Scarlet Witch watch Quicksilver be shot over and over again. Magneto just killed or could have killed his own son. Now, you do have Magneto leave. But right before book number two closes, you do have Charles Xavier try to reach the ultimate saying, listen, we can work together to bring Magneto down. But after Magneto, after Magneto had attacked the base, you have Steve Rogers say, no, no, I'm done. I got a man down, a base destroyed, Magneto basically kicked our butt, and the X-Men now want to come out of hiding to help us? No. We are now going to capture the X-Men and also capture the Brotherhood of Mutants. And that wraps up part two. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate War number three, with this book right here guys, this book does pick up with Nick Fury right now taking the president to a safe location. Because right now guys, Magneto wants to erase the human race, but also he's after the president. Because the president kind of basically called war on Magneto back in volume one. And so Magneto is trying to get to the president. And so you have Nick Fury say, listen, I'm going to take you to a safe location we call Lincoln. Lincoln is so heavily guarded that not even our ultimates can get through them. So don't worry. We got you protected. If Magneto comes here to Lincoln, he will get shot up so fast. He will have no idea what happened to him. Now. You do have the president, the president as Nick Fury. Why in the world are you not helping, not helping? Why in the world are you not calling in the X-Men? Because the X-Men are well trained to help take care of bad mutants. So the X-Men should possibly be helping us right now. They can help us catch Magneto. But you have Nick Fury say, no, they lied to us. They made us believe that they killed Magneto, but in reality, he was alive. We had the most number one wanted terrorist in the world believe dead, and right now, he's alive. He's back. He's trying to erase the human race. He is after you and your family. Matter of fact, he killed 800 people on the Brooklyn Bridge by blowing it up. 
You have people out there afraid to eat right now because of him. We are not going to ask for the X-Men help because they made the world believe that the world was a safer place because Magneto was dead. Instead, they were trying to rehab him back into being a perfect person, a good mutant, but it failed. And now he's back. And with him back, the whole world is scared. So no, the X-Men are at fault here and we are not going to ask for their help. Now, we do jump over to the base the X-Men are using right now temporarily. And the thing is though, guys, right now you kind of have the X-Men still on edge because now they're most wanted. And two, because Cyclops is supposedly dead. And so it's kind of like they're on edge right now. They got a dead X-Men member. You know, they're most wanted in the world right now by S.H.I.E.L.D. They are on the edge. But the thing is though, you have Charles Xavier say, you know what? I got an idea. I got an idea. We are going to do this right here. We are going to set up a meeting with Magneto. We're going to sit down with Magneto and hopefully he will agree to our peace treaty and just end all of this, end this war on humans and on us. We need to come up with a peace treaty. Now, before they meet up with Magneto, you do have Jean Grey tell Charles Xavier, listen, I don't think Cyclops' death was an accident. I think Wolverine killed Cyclops to get to me because him and I were an item. And it's kind of like, well, hey, that could be a possibility, Jean Grey. Now, we do jump over to this meeting between Charles Xavier and Magneto. And the thing is though, guys, right now, Magneto is not there. Magneto called up one of his psychic mutant friends to help talk to Charles Xavier through another dead body. And the thing is though, you have Charles talk to this dead body, not dead body, sorry, not dead body, some other person's body, but it's Magneto's voice being spoken through the body. It's weird. Anyways, you do have Charles Xavier talk to this person who is basically mentally connected to Magneto. And he says, listen, Eric, we need to end this. We need to end this war because right now you are going to go on a rampage and try to kill the human race. And with you doing that right there, you're going to make things worse for mutants. So no, stop this. Stop this war. But stop coming after us. Let's work together to try to find a way to make the world a better place for both mutants and humans. Like, we can do this. And the thing is, though, you have Magneto say no. No, no, no. You're trying so hard to get this peaceful world, Charles. And the thing is, you don't see the fact that that world will never happen. And so Magneto just ends the meeting without coming to a peaceful ending, a peace treaty. Now, you do have Jean Grey, Storm, and Charles get in the car to leave the meeting. And as they're leaving, you do have Jean Grey and Storm kind of like, well, that was a fail. But the thing is though, you have Charles Xavier say, no, it was not a fail at all. I called that meeting because I knew that Eric would say no, but I had Wolverine hide out somewhere. And since Wolverine is the one person I know on earth who is able to block out psychic powers, he's going to tell back Eric's friend back to Magneto's base for us because Magneto's psychics cannot pick up on Wolverine. They can read our minds but they can't read Wolverine's mind. So I called this meeting, even though I knew that Eric would say no, I'll have Wolverine tell Magneto's guy back to the base of Magneto. Now, you do have Magneto kind of like Charles. Do you really take me as that kind of person who would easily fall for that, that easy little trick 
having Wolverine stash out somewhere to come after me. Did you think I would fall for that? Don't worry, because I gave the Ultimates the best tip of all. And to wrap up Ultimate Ward number three, you have the Ultimates right now on the outside looking at the safe house that the X-Men are using, saying we are thankful for that, that tip we got, but we have no idea where in the world that tip came from. But we found the base the X-Men are using right now. And you have Cap say, it's time to roll some heads. It's time to bring the X-Men in now. Now guys, when it comes to Ultimate War number four, with this book right here, guys, this is the book where we basically see the X-Men fight against the Ultimates. And this is the conclusion to the whole story right here. This is us saying, you know what? It's time for us to go ahead and wrap up this story right here with Ultimate War number four. Now, you do have the X-Men fighting against the Ultimates and they do go back and forth, back and forth. But the thing is though, guys, there's some key moments that I do want to point out in this book right here. One of the things I do want to point out in this book is Captain America talking to Logan. Because guys, at this point in the fight right here, the X-Men are pretty much defeated. I mean, at first, it did seem like the X-Men could defeat the Ultimates, but of course, the Ultimates were able to bounce back and capture most of the X-Men. Now, real quick though, you do have uh, Captain America talk to Logan. He says, do you remember me? Do you remember the time we fought alongside each other in those wars? And the thing is, you have Wolverine kind of like, what are you talking about? I never fought in any war at all. My name is not Jim. My name is not James Howlett. My name is Logan. But the thing is, you have Cap say, dude, they really mess your mind up. Like you have no idea about your past. Like, dude, you fought in wars with me in Africa and France. You fought alongside with me. How in the world did they mess you up this bad? Like, how is that possible? Now, Wolverine is falling for Cap's trap because Cap is doing this just to distract Wolverine to shoot him down to basically neutralize Wolverine. But it's Cap saying, you should remember me. How bad did Weapon X and S.H.I.E.L.D. mess you up? Like, they made you forget about everything. And thing is though, guys, after the Ultimates were able to collect Colossus, Beast, Wolverine, Jean Grey, Shadowcat, and Thor, the X-Men seem like they have lost. And they're all about to be sent to a camp in Cuba. A mutant camp in Cuba for, for what they did. For lying to the world about Magneto's death. But, right before you have the Ultimates about to take away the X-Men, Iceman left his parents behind. Guys, remember, Iceman has been removed from the X-Men since Ultimate X-Men Volume 3. After World Tour, he was in a coma. And when he came out of that coma, his parents said, no more. His parents said, no more. You can no longer be with the X-Men. You are going to stay with us. And he left his family behind to go help the X-Men out. And what he did, he was able to use his powers to the extreme to give the X-Men a brief moment, a brief moment for Charles Xavier to just make every non-mutant, every non-mutant mind to be frozen, to not move at all. Meaning that they're just frozen in stasis. Their mind just shut down just temporarily for the X-Men to escape. Because they are non-mutants and Charles was able to do that. But the thing is though, Nick Fury always has a game plan. 
He always has a game plan. And he says, it's okay. Because on my team of ultimates, we have, we have a mutant of our own. And guys, if you watch my ultimates volume one video, we came to find out that Wasp, one of the ultimates, is also a mutant. And with her being a mutant, she was not affected by Charles Xavier's mind blast. And so she was able to get to Charles Xavier, shut him down. But when she got there to sh shut him down, every other X-Men member got away. Jean Grey, Iceman, Colossus, Storm, Beast, Wolverine, they're all gone. Kitty Pride, they're all gone. Iceman gave a brief moment to let Charlie Xavier do a mind blast to non-mutants to let the X-Men get away. And it's kind of like, dang. Now, to wrap up Ultimate X-Men, sorry, Ultimate War with the X-Men in the Ultimates, you do have uh, Charles Xavier locked up in his little mutant cage. And it's kind of like they are going to send him to Cuba to just get rid of him, to lock him away to put him on a mutant camp in Cuba. But right before the book closes, Magneto is somehow able to talk to Charles Xavier without the Ultimates knowing that Magneto is in there with Charles Xavier right now. So on the cameras and the microphones, Magneto is not in there, but in reality, he is in there. And he asks Charles one more time, what will it take for you, little man, to join me in my brotherhood of mutants? And you have Charles say, no, I'm not going to join you. And the reason why, is because I'm trying to make a world better and you're trying to make the world worse. How in the world can you and I work together if we have two ultimate goals? There is no way you and I can be on the same team. And the book closes saying, to be continued in Ultimate X-Men. And that will be our next video right there. Now guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Please leave me a like down below. Also, subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, let me know in the comments below. Because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But anyways, guys, I'm out of here, and I'll see you on the next comic book video. Later, guys.